Hi guys, it's Greg at panelsrus.co.uk. One of the questions that's come up recently around Falcon Pi Player is how do I remote control or how do I get remote access to Falcon Pi Player when I'm out and about? Maybe you've got a long drive and your um, Wi-Fi doesn't stretch all the way to the bottom, uh, so you need to access it on your mobile phone. Uh, or maybe if you work away from home during the week, uh, you need to be able to gain access to your FPP to make sure that it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Either way, it can be a bit of a minefield to set up uh, network address translation or natting uh, through your router to get access to it, things like that. Last year we were recommending um, some alternative solutions including no IP and things like that but they're a bit of a pain to set up and it depends on your router, quite how you do it and things like that. This year there's a new player on the scene in the form of Dataplicity, uh, a simple web interface that your FPP connects to and you connect to it as well and you don't need any complicated setup on the networking side as long as your Pi has got web access, uh, so you've got it connected to your home network, you've got DNS set up so it can get out uh, to the outside world. So let's run you through the process of how we do it. So I'm going to go first of all to my Falcon Pi player and let's just confirm that it is connected to uh, the outside world. So I'm just going to double check the networking and we can see that we're cabled via ETH0, uh, it's up at the top here, uh, and it's on DHCP for both the network address and DNS. So we shouldn't have any issues. We're getting an IP and DNS from our network, so we should be able to get out. Let's just confirm that we can ping uh, successfully. If I just go into manual for a second, stick 8888 which is the IP address of Google's DNS servers. Let's just confirm it can ping it. There we go. The ping is returning. So there we go. We've got three successful pings there. So we know that we've got internet uh, connectivity. So I'm going to open a new tab and navigate to dataplicity.com. There we go. Now this really is a simple setup. All we need to do is to enter our email address. There we go. It's set, set up an account for us and it's given us a URL to enter on the Raspberry Pi. I'm just gonna highlight that and then press Control C on my keyboard to copy. There we go. And we now need to go back to the Pi uh, to enter this line of code. Now we can do it through the web interface on the Raspberry Pi. If we go to help and SSH shell, it's going to ask us for a login. Now the defaults on these are FPP for the username and Falcon, F-A-L-C-O-N, for the password. There we go. Now, if I right click on here with my mouse, I get the option to paste from browser. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, now it gives me a paste box. If I press Control and V from, uh, again, on the keyboard, that will then paste in the line that we just copied from the Dataplicity site. So we'll do that, OK it, and it now puts that into the window for us. And I can press Enter to execute it. There we go, it's done. So that is the installation of Dataplicity uh, complete. So if I now navigate to the URL it's given us here at the bottom, 
it's given us a link to the SSH shell on the uh, straight on this web page. But what we actually want is called the wormhole because that will give us the web interface. So over on the right hand side, we need to enable the wormhole by checking the box and we then get a new unique URL to access our instance of FPP. So I'm going to click that now. And there we go. There is our instance of FPP uh, running through Dataplicity. Now this URL is available anywhere in the world that you've got web access and you can get to your FPP and off you go. So it runs just like normal and um, do everything you can do um, as if you were on the local network. Now for the more security conscious of you, uh, you might want to put a username and password onto this. I mean, the, the URL is pretty unlikely to be copied. They're, they're randomly generated and, uh, and it's unlikely anybody else will come up with it. Um, but you can still add a uh, username and password if you wish to. Now, at the present time, uh, version 4.6.1 and 4.6, um, the password protection doesn't actually work when using Dataplicity. Um, however, uh, it has now been fixed. Uh, one of the ELF members, Ben, has uh, put in a patch which has been accepted uh, to resolve this. Um, so by the time you're watching, uh, if you're on a, a later version than this, then it will work for you. So I will go through how to do it. But just bear in mind, if you're on 4.6 or 4.6.1, it doesn't work at the moment. So to do that, we'll go into status control, FPP settings. If we then go to user interface, uh, UI, and check the enable UI password, so there we are, so that's enabled using a default password of Falcon. Um, so the username is admin, password is Falcon, um, but you can then of course go in and change that to whatever you want. So I could put in demo123, uh, demo123, one, demo one, there we go, click off and it's you can see that it's saved them already. Um, so from this point on, if you're accessing over your home network. So if I uh, open a new browser here to my via my home network, you can see it's prompting me for a username and password. So that'll be admin and demo123. There we go. And in it goes. Um, if I do it through Dataplicity, uh, I'll just copy that URL there close the window and reopen it. You can see that it just lets me straight in at the moment. Um, but once you've got the later release, then it will prompt you for the same username and password. And that is it. Uh, Dataplicity is now set up. We can access the Pi remotely from wherever we are in the world. Uh, just make a note of the URL um, because they're all unique. Uh, and off you go. Have fun. Uh, take care and we'll see you soon. Bye.